Now, many of America's forest areas are highly logged and over time, this has amounted to increasing pressure for many arboreal species to take refuge. Now, most of America's smaller mammals, such as foxes, fisher cats and bobcats, are active during the dawn to dusk period of the day, and in particular, the species which I'm trying to track down. Right, Richie, well, funny thing is, some of the best places that I like to actually walk about is on open land. Reason is, well, you can see things from a good distance. Having said that, things can see you from a good distance as well. So you've always got to have that, well, that sense of cover about you. Now, there's a couple of different species I'm still yet to try and find out here in America. And one of them is the raccoon. And, you know, you don't see him out in open areas like this. Having said that, there are many species that you do, and there's one in particular that I'm after. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I know I'm going to find one sooner or later. Only because, well, this area here harbors a large population and it's a species of animal which is completely unique to this area and I absolutely love them. Woo! Come on, Dickie! Now, I'm trying to stay as vigilant and unsuspicious to my surroundings as I'm looking for evidence that a particular animal is or has been in a certain area. This is called its sign. Now, there are many identifiable signs, including feces, burrow openings, tracks, or sheddings, which can help me determine what species may occupy a particular habitat. Uh, go around that way, go around the other side. Go on the other side. Mate, you got the camera recording, yeah? Yep. Alright, you. see him? Um, I know he saw him disappear somewhere over here. Now, Chuchi, trying to pull one of these guys out of a thorny plant area is harder than it looks but it surely works when you're retreating from a predator, such as a bird of prey like an eagle, or even a human like me. This guy here, he's known as the oh, he's known as the armadillo, the nine-banded armadillo, and yeah, pretty common. Having said that, I've been on the search for one for a while, and we've noticed something, right? That out here in these open areas, this is where you're going to find them, and the reason is, the reason is, let me give a breath. The reason is, whenever they've cut and cultivated all this. You know, it's, um, it is, it's almost sad to see this sort of area that it's like this. Having said that, because there's so many fallen logs and cut trees, it harbours a diversity of insects, including the main diet of this little guy being termites and ants. And that's why you can find them out here in these locations. They just forage around, get into those, those logs with these sharp claws, absolutely sharp claws. And it's funny because as I was chasing him, one of the defense measures is either A, I'm going to dig down real deep, or B, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to hit you in the face. Now, what's really sad about these guys is they get hit by cars. And, um, you know, it's probably one of the most common animals in America to be hit by cars. It's unfortunate because they're so cute. You just, just want to hug them. Having said that, they're probably not an animal that you'd like to cuddle up and hug with at night. Reason being, these guys carry leprosy, unfortunately, but um, it's only when uh, I've got a cut wound, he's got a cut wound, that sort of transfusion that happens there. Do you like me? Oh, please, no, it's all there, it's all there. You can see they're, they're awfully strong as well. Look at you. You're amazing. All right, mate, I'm going to give you a bit of a release, what do you reckon? Yeah, let me get you back out in there, that scrub. All right. <laughs> 